So today um, I wanted to talk about two methods that are available uh, that we're currently using for data recovery on memory cards. Um, and one of them is um, a, a chip-off procedure that uh, I've been using for a very, very, very long period of time now. So the memory components uh, get removed from the board, and I'll show you that in a second. And uh, using those memory components alone, bypassing the uh, controller and the printed circuit board and the circuitry that's on there, uh, the data gets uh, reconstructed from uh, raw NAND content. So NAND protocol connects to the chips. The data using the NAND protocol gets extracted, saved as a binary data file and that that binary data file later gets uh, manipulated in certain ways depending on how it's supposed to be put together uh, to form a file structure and eventually give us access to the final product, which is the data. Uh, this card that I received in the mail today uh, bounced around a couple of data recovery shops already and uh, the reason why we're working on it today is because uh, uh, the police who said that they can fix it and get the information back uh, quoted three thousand dollars for this i'm not talking about logically failed card where uh, your partition got somehow screwed up or you deleted some photos from it and you need to recover them that stuff can be handled by software uh, one of my favorite softwares that you can use for this would be our studio the link to that is in the description you can always download it as a demo version and see how it can help you. But in majority of cases where the card begins to have a problem on uh, other uh, levels, uh, whether it's uh, connection or uh, component related problems, usually the card will start to get recognized in a very strange way. Our studio can also help you to troubleshoot some of these ways to give you a better understanding about what the problem is. So if you got a card that is not getting recognized in the camera, per se, put it in the card reader and see if the software can pick it up. If it does not detect it at all, the problem is either with a bad connection, damaged controller, bad memory, something on uh, the device that is not letting the unit to initialize. So if the card that's supposed to be 64 gig shows up as a 64 gig, the next step would be to confirm whether or not that volume actually has data in it because you may also have a situation where the volume is showing as complete so 64 in our case uh, but if we were to explore uh, the card and have it scanned nothing is found and that's usually uh, caused by a failed translator and if the translator is not working properly your card will just show as repeating patterns of same sectors no data inside if you following this channel, uh, this video is very similar to the one I've done just a few uh, weeks ago, and that was with uh, this specific card. The reason why I wanted to make this video today is because uh, um, the card that was recovered is right here, and I'm gonna use that same board to recover this unit. Now the idea is if the cards are the same, uh, their controllers are the same. And uh, the information about the mix on how the data is arranged is kept on the NAND. So transferring NANDs over from failed unit onto the working one uh, bypasses tons of potential issues. Uh, the biggest flaw with this card is the design of this card, first of all, because this card, uh, Lexar Professional uh, 1000X or even 800X, sometimes uh, is built on a, such a flimsy board and such a big controller, uh, the most vulnerable spot, as I explained in the previous video, falls right between the two chips where they meet and any type of flex will have consequences to uh, the state of the controller. Controller is very fragile on them, can break very easily. So the BGA uh, component, as some of you may know, has a bunch of tiny solder balls underneath that mount to the board and that's how the connection takes place. Because of the flexing and the tension and how flexible that PCB really is, uh, damaging pads and ripping them off the board is very easy. Often enough, even myself, when I open up the card, 
the surrounding pads can break off. Luckily, those surrounding pads, they are not critical, they're not connected, so they're just there for alignment and extra rigidity, extra support. Uh, let's have a look at what exactly came in the mail. We've got two memory chips and uh, BGA-132 packaging that had been removed and uh, from what I can tell they've been brushed slightly for better contact so uh, somebody tried to do the chip off recovery on them there are cleaner ways to um, prep the component um, for reading there's a lot of scraped off mask that could potentially be a problem. We can take care of all that stuff uh, in the prep process. My guess would be maybe some of the critical pads came off. Like there's a bunch of them missing on the top one. So the board is ruined. Like, I'm, I mean, there's really no point in trying to fix this. The other thing that is super important here is the order of these chips. Um, the order of these chips for us to do what we're gonna do today is absolutely crucial and well at least they weren't lazy enough to mark at least one of them that gives us a little bit of a clue that this was the first chip and this is the second chip and that's just going off my own um, ways of uh, marking them how I would remove them that would be the first position that would be the second position Let's have a look at uh, my flash, uh, my memory card and see how much uh, alike they really are. Markings on chips, um, I, I, have a, I have an episode where I actually had to go and recover data directly uh, from memory using the chip off recovery because I thought they were not going to be compatible. This client sent me two identical cards and uh, one of the cards had BGA-152 chips on it, another one had BGA-132. Obviously they had different markings on them and because of that I assumed that they're just not going to be compatible enough. Um, so I decided not to use it and recovered data from that card using data recovery equipment. But in our case here, uh, this is how I marked them. This would be chip 1, chip 2 and this here would be well would you look at that N W eight one three we have actually an exact match so those cards are um, the same <laughs> exactly the same actually so this should definitely work um, with the previous uh, removal of this chip, I'm a little bit worried, not a lot of worried, but a little bit worried that this is exposed too much and they're kind of close. Um, if we don't want any uh, surprises later on, the best thing would be to just apply some green mask, green mechanics mask here and uh, let it cure before the rebolt takes place. This is just alcohol. Clean it up a little bit. Right now, the mask is cured, more or less. And uh, we can uh, move on to the next step, which is reballing. Reballing is uh, a procedure where the little tiny solder balls underneath the chip uh, are being formed so that it can mate the uh, printed circuit board after. For uh, BGA-132, I'll be using just uh, uh, regular MG Chemicals um, leaded paste and the stencil. Line it up. 
I need to get some more paste. Pronto. For this case, I'm still good, but I'm running really low on it. So there, that's what it should look like. This one is ready. I'll just do the exact same thing with the second one and uh, we're good to go. I always mark my chips on both sides uh, but even if those two were marked um, I don't know what sequence they removed them at. So I went ahead and I read those chips uh, into just raw dump files and from uh, review of that information I can tell that this chip is supposed to be first and that's that makes sense because before that it had like a it had like a mark that looked similar to mine that uh, I think would indicate that it's um, first one in the sequence so since our original board is totally messed up I mean I wouldn't want to try to fix this this is the control panel for it, so we're gonna set it up to buck 50. You can see that the smoke is starting to appear. So the top chip is here, the bottom chip is here. One. That's chip two. So basically right now just making it making sure that it's uh, it's flat there is one pad I'm not really liking and that's right there something got separated uh, one of the non-connected pads came loose and it went over to the middle I'm happy I was able to spot that So that's done. Since this is a BGA 132 and the board is pre-designed for BGA 152, both of them are um, both of them have like the same pinout. But uh, when we're laying down 132 and 152 positions. Uh, the 10 pins on each side that don't make uh, up to the pads on the, on the component help me guide 
the, the device and center it properly. It's gonna have like half of the pad sticking out on each side, so left and right. Three fifty at fifty airflow is what I'm gonna use to set them up. And th when they're not perfect in the middle, to me, I actually find it better because when uh, it gets all pulled in, it centers itself, and I know that the uh, solder is hot enough and it's melted. That's all it takes. That's all it needs. Set it here. Where is the alcohol? Yeah, it's covered with flux right now. I just want to clean up the interface. It's not messing up the pins in the reader. Really need to, don't really need to clean up other parts on the card because they are going to be pretty much covered by the, um, by the card itself. So that goes in here like that. And this goes on top like this. So now our thing is starting to look like a normal card again. This is not a mission to save the card's well-being, obviously, because uh, in order to do that, you're going to have to disassemble a working card. So that's going to be just counterproductive. But to save the data, this is my preferred way if um, the donor is available if the donor is not available that's a completely different story and obviously in that situation i would just go for um, chip off recovery so i got my laptop here that has a card reader let's go set up the ISO a little bit higher so you can see it Plug it in. What do we see right here, just now? Untitled. Why is it not showing? Pro oh, there we go. DCIM. So it looks like Olympus was used. Thank you guys very much for tuning in today. Hopefully you learned something new. If you have any questions, as always, comment section, post away, and I'll be happy to answer uh, everything that I can. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel and you're interested in data recovery, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the notification button to be notified the next time a new video drops, as always. And uh, for those of you who are following this channel on a regular basis, I just want to say thanks once again for your um, incredible support. Really does mean a lot and makes me want to make these videos more and more. Thank you guys. I'm working on a few videos right now. Uh, just uh, trying to find time to edit them in, but uh, shortly enough they'll be on this channel. So stay tuned for that and I'll hope to see you guys then.